Enzo Lamori wants to talk about all eyes on me. You're right. It should be all eyes on me. And if you want to help hashtag make wrestling fun again in 2017, then find that little red button and hashtag subscribe or die to OTRS Central. We're going to do it. You, 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 all of you, me. We are going to make wrestling fun again. Hashtag subscribe or die, bitches. Now let's talk about Raw this week. So after last week, the Raw that I enjoyed quite a bit, I, I was a little pumped and a little excited for this go-home show before, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. And the WWE started off in a way that I personally wouldn't have with that long-running video recap from last week with the Casshole and Enzo. You know, you're excited and you're pumped, and then this thing just kind of brings you down a little bit. And while it's an interesting statement that the WWE would open the show giving Enzo the platform and the live mic, um, which is an indication that they trust his ability to deliver on the mic and that they're invested enough in this story to care enough to feature it the way that they did, it just personally wouldn't be the way that I started off the show. And part of the problem with this whole thing, it's not that the segment was bad, it's not that the promo was bad, even though I don't think right now, based off of what's going on, Enzo should be regurgitating the tired and repetitive lines and being all pumped up when he's coming out because his best friend betrayed him. People don't celebrate when that type of stuff happens. It's hard to latch onto that and buy into the story if he's still acting the exact way uh, that he was before. It should be at least a little bit of variance, a little bit of difference. But even though the segment is good, the problem is I just can't get bought in. To me, they broke up these guys way too early. Then you look at it, even building to a match between these two. You, you feel like you know how this is going to go. And having Kaz win, what does that mean for Enzo? If you ridiculously had Enzo win, then why the hell did you break off big Kaz on his own? And just... You can have some good stuff and it leads to nothing of significance. And that's kind of what it feels like. I'm not saying it's not necessary. It's just this is the tough spot pairing these two together and ultimately splitting them off. You just kind of get to this awkward space. Now, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Enzo long term. Uh, put him in the cruiserweight division, probably where he needs to go, at least for the time being, if they're going to have him be an in-ring performer. Because let's face it, it's not like uh, the ring work and the excitement level in the ring matters much in that division anyways, so why not give it an injection of some personality and some charisma and another person that can actually talk on the microphone? It's just, again, I don't want to crap on the segment because the segment itself wasn't bad. I just find myself not giving a fuck. Sometimes when you don't care about something, your mind kind of wanders. And as we got into this women's tag right after the opening segment, I couldn't help but be overcome by the deep down burning question is Nia Jax a facial or cream pie type of girl? Cream pie in the puss? Cream pie in the ass? Is she an ass to mouth type of fun girl? I don't know. It's the burning questions that most of you aren't asking, but now sadistically many of you want to know. Uh, Bailey was in this match. Did you know? No? Nobody cared? Especially when she left? God. <laughs> Burying this bitch. And what, what's so stupid about this whole thing is you get to the point now with Sasha taking on the champion Alexa Bliss and this monster Nia Jax, who of course you had to have get tapped out by Sasha last week. Now this week, in what amounted to a glorified one-on-two handicap match, Sasha Banks is overcoming the fucking odds and making the champion fucking tap. This is Roman Reigns type shit here. I'd expect people to be pooning this and burying what they're doing with this bald-headed bitch right now. This is stupid. Why the fuck do we even care at this point? Divas revolution, women's revolution, my ass. This is stupid bullshit. And I could give two fucks less about their title match come Sunday. Oh, imagine that. Noam Dar and Cedric Alexander are wrestling again. It's the story that never ends, and of course, when the mind wanders, you start to think about things. And my thoughts on this were, you know, while I understand and talked about before, Alicia is so much more comfortable when she's associated with a white guy. Stop sticking her with the black man, because she doesn't know anything about them, nor does she care about them. But when it comes to Noam Dar, does Alicia call him Stu, or do we stay in kayfabe and call him Wade? And if he doesn't pleasure her, uh, does she say, Noam, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. I, I'm just wondering. And it's frustrating to me because Cedric Ta Alexander is a talent. 
Like I could actually see something there. Instead of wasting his time playing tiddlywinks with Noam Dar in this stupid ass storyline, he should be, not that Tozawa dude, he should be a part of the Titus brand, period. So I was wondering if WWE was actually going to follow up on the LeVar Ball and Miz TV segment last week, and they did. Credit to them, they did. Of course, they sent Miz out there to try and take some shots at the whole thing, try and bask in the glory of the controversy that was created, but then all the while trying to bury it a little bit. And you can't bury it. LeVar Ball put 95% of your roster to fucking shame last week. Accept it. At least once we got past that, The Miz cut a completely babyface promo, bashing everything about Dean Ambrose. Amen and hallelujah. Thank you. Somebody that understands our plight. Ambrose is terrible. Wash your ass, dude. Renee Young ain't that good to where you just stop giving a shit about everything else in life other than banging her boring average body ass. Thank God he Slater came out and shut him the fuck up. And, and you know, and when he Slater came out, I'm like, holy shit, I want to see him and Miz feud for the IC title. Why not? And furthermore, we need some day in the life segments of he Slater with his kids at his double wide in West Virginia where their house guest is fucking Jamie Noble and Nydia. That's what we need. That's what we need. And, and apparently this whole concept, and even the thought of getting some of these Day in the Life segments for Heath Slater and his kids, because after all, the man's got kids. The Miz couldn't contain himself. He's splitting his pants down the seam. Apparently he went to the same tailor as Pat Patterson, just saying. It was refreshing to see Heath Slater get featured a little bit like this, if anything, so that way we didn't have to... Uh, focus on Dean Ambrose so fucking much, even though they put him on commentary for unbeknownst reasons to me. Uh, we, could, we could dream about Heath Slater getting a push. We could dream. Don't kill my dream, damn it! So we got another Shattered Truth production. Oh, whoopity do! Get your popcorn ready? Nah. Now I'm getting to the point where anything involving gold dust and our truth is a guaranteed built-in bathroom break. And while I could bitch about that, I'll just say to WWE, thank you. A couple of questions. Number one, why does Seth Rollins have to squash Kurt Hawkins so quickly? Number two, why is Seth Rollins still a babyface? Three, why would anybody care about Seth Rollins as a babyface? Four, why is Bray Wyatt not being called Bray Offerman yet? Number five, why is Bray Wyatt in the desert talking? And number six, why would I care about either guy or this feud, or their upcoming match at Great Balls of Fire. Huh? It was another week and another good segment with Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar. I love the split-screen interview. I love the way that they're trying to present Samoa Joe as a heel, but as a serious ass-kicking, I ain't afraid of shit heel. He's going to come after Brock Lesnar. He's going to come after Brock Lesnar. Brock ain't backing down. Samoa Joe ain't backing down. And you've gotten to the point now where you've really built up this match very nicely heading into Great Balls of Fire. You've clearly got a match that feels like a real main event. It feels like a big fight, but we've almost gotten to the point where we've done too much too quickly to where, granted, maybe you're trying to get all this shit in because you're doing a one-off, but we've gotten to the point now where it feels like this match right now should be main eventing SummerSlam next month, not Great Balls of Fire this month. And furthermore, you've kind of boxed yourself into a hole by sitting there saying that this is pretty much going to be a one-off. Frankly, I want to see these guys continue, at least through SummerSlam. We can wait on Roman's time. We can. Believe me, we can. And we should. Mark is smart here, and I gotta tell ya, if you haven't done so already, you need to check out both nights of the New Japan G1 USA special. It was, how do they say, awesome. Okada rules. Kenny Omega is arguably the best motherfucker wrestler in the world. And I understand that Schleg Daddy is coming over to the dark side. He reviewed night one, and I understand he's going to review night two, and I might just have to crash that bitch. But y'all need to go check out that review. But as far as Finn Balor... This unbridled, unjustified hate needs to stop. Finn Balor is magnificent and a future top guy. Frankly, to me, he already is a top guy, but what would I know? I'm just Marcus fucking smart after all. But Finn Balor, within one year, one year, mark my words, will be world champion again, and he will have one of the best 
motherfucker title reigns in history. Because again, he is also one of the best motherfucker wrestlers in the world. Now, in the interest of fairness, Finn Balor versus Cesaro was clearly the match of the night. I don't know how much that says, but it was a really good raw match. I'd be okay with these guys facing off again at some point in time in the future. Cool. Whatever. But let me throw the bullshit flag here for just a second and point out something. You had Elias Sampson come out for a distraction. We had the Hardys getting involved. Finn Balor gets yoked up multiple times and distracted with multiple times just so that way he can overcome the odds to beat one of the tag team champs and fucking Cesaro. If this was Roman Reigns or John Cena... All of you would be sitting there and bitching and pissing and moaning, and legitimately so, because that's crazy. But of course, since it's fucking Finn Balor, it magically makes it okay. Look, as the t-shirt says, bacon fixes everything. But the one thing it can't fix is the fact that Finn Balor still fucking sucks. And at some point in time, I pray that all of you can come to that realization. This match was good, the finish is trash, and Finn Balor is trash, and do, does he even have an announced match for the pay-per-view at this point in time? And if he doesn't, then why the hell is he going over one half of the tag team champions? Fuck that shit! Do not care what Summer said. Great balls of fire. It's all about two words. Braun Strowman. The words Braun Strowman has this patch of Roman Reigns. Brock Lesnar, he's coming for you, cracker. Summer's back, bitches, and I don't care what my sister Piglet says. Come Sunday, Great Balls of Fire is going to be about two words. Roman Reigns, because Roman Reigns is a badass. And while Braun Strowman with his Care Bear looking ass thinks he's the baddest man on the block, Roman Reigns wins the battle where it matters most. Backstage politics, bitches. Roman Reigns is going to kick that ass Sunday. And then comes SummerSlam. Samoa Joe, Brock Lesnar, it don't matter. You're just another obstacle in the way of the guy to becoming the new universal champion. Roman Reigns rules. Hell yeah, bitches. Roman, love you. Love you, Roman. Call me! I absolutely love the fact that Titus O'Neil is writing checks with his mouth that his wrestlers' asses can't cash. This is LeVar Ball type of shit. It makes sense that he would get Apollo Crews a main event match against fucking Braun Strowman. Like, you look at Apollo Crews. Mini Battle Toad Lashley here. <laughs> Smiling and everything, and you want to put him up against... The fucking Roman Destroyer, fucking Braun Strowman. And I don't know what the fuck that kick was, but that was incredible. Absolutely incredible. And I'm sorry, Chase, but the Care Bear is starting to convert me to his side. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. And even afterwards, the whole shit of the ambulance, tying into the ambulance match Sunday, and here comes Roman. He eventually spears Braun off the stage. Everybody wants to shit on Roman. This was good television. I'm not going to shit on good television that makes me care about a marquee featured match come Sunday at the pay-per-view. This was a really good, solid ending for this go-home episode of Raw. And now I feel kind of lucky that at a not even major pay-per-view, just a Raw-branded pay-per-view, I have Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns in an ambulance match that I'm invested in tremendously and Samoa Joe versus Brock Lesnar for the Universal title that I'm also invested tremendously in. Two interesting, compelling matchups that could go any number of ways that the WWE's done a great job of building my interest up into. And both matches feel like big fights. As so often the case with WWE because everybody faces each other all the time. Everybody can win the title. We so rarely get that big fight feel. And with these two matches, we've got a big fight feel. It's just a shame that so many people were so determined to boo Roman Reigns for this one particular segment um, when they didn't need to. This is good television. J 
Jesus Christ, as much as I bitch and moan, piss and complain about everything, even I could sit there and for one segment, put it to the side and say, you know what, okay, this makes for good television. Braun got his last week. Let Roman get a little bit of shine here. You still made Braun Strowman look tough as shit because he's getting up before Roman fucking gets up after getting speared off the damn stage. What the hell is going to happen Sunday? Seriously. The shit was good. And I can't wait to see how everything goes down at goodness gracious great balls of fire. I don't know that this show was as good as last week's, but I still had some stuff that I could get down with. I still had some stuff that slightly to moderately entertained me. That's all I'm asking. Doesn't have to be perfect, but give me something. And this company has given me something. And like I said, given me something to really look forward to come Sunday which is more than I could really ask for for this fucking company.